Hey guys, what's up? Alright, so in this video we're going to be looking at classes. Uh, in one of the previous videos we looked at what functions are and how functions are very similar to what I was talking about with methods. And methods are attached to class objects. Objects are created from a class, so a class can be basically thought of as uh, blueprints for how to create an object. Uh, also known as like an object kind of factory, so it's it's just instructions on how to create an object and what that object can do. So in order to create a class in Python 3.5, it's very easy. We just have to say class, and we'll just call this my class, and that's all it is. And then just a colon. So it looks just like the define statement for the functions that we had made, except it's different. So a class is going to consist of a bunch of different what look like functions but they're really called methods because they're attached to a class object so if I said define uh, test this looks like a, a function but it's you need to uh, know the terminology that it's going to be considered a method because it's under a class so this is a method alright now if I want to actually um, do something and be able to use this class I need to create an object from it so I could just say x equals my class and then I'm going to do open and close uh, parenthesis now x is an object that was created from this class so I could now say x dot test and call that method um, that I was telling you about so I'm calling the objects a method so if I run this One of the things that Python is really weird about is that you do have to explicitly pass in the argument to itself. And that makes no sense, especially for anybody that's just starting out. Um, and I, I'm trying to think of the best way to explain it. But to be honest with you, it's, it's very difficult to explain. But when, object, when, this, when an object is created from this blueprint, in order for it to be able to call its object methods, it has to actually pass itself as the first argument to any sort of method that you have under that object so you just sent, uh, essentially have to get into the habit of putting self as the first argument for every method that is inside of your your class and it's nuts I know but you see by doing that it now operates and it does what we expect it to do so you're probably wondering well what is self self is X So, in order for it to know that test, um, it, it's just weird, like I said. Just, so, just get into the habit of putting self on your methods, any sort of method that's inside of a class. Now, one thing I want to try to explain to you guys um, without getting too complicated is how uh, scope works in, in Python. And um, scope in a programming language can be thought of um, as to... Uh, basically, variables can share the same name, but their values can be different depending on the scope uh, of how you call that variable so to give uh, to, uh, so to understand that let me just give an example here we're gonna say scope variable equals this is the uh, global scope so anything that is um, any sort of variable that is gonna be declared outside of a class method or something like that especially at, you know this particular start of the program this variable is going to be put into memory and in the main execution block of of the code so this is going to be known as a, a global variable right so don't think about it too much but just know that this is global now if we went ahead and we define that um, down in here we could actually change the value so we change the value which really isn't anything spectacular but instead of uh, printing this out we're going to print out the scope variable so obviously what's going to end up happening when we call this we're going to have uh, scope variable is going to overwrite the global variable so we said change the value so this uh, this local this local this scope changed the actual global value and even though we're executing it from within our class it's important that if I said print scope variable you see what's going on we didn't actually overwrite the global scope so just so you know everything in Python is an object and it's a reference to a memory spot so when the program is is created the variables created and then it's uh, defined a memory spot to this value of 
uh, this is a global sc uh, scope. And then we execute it in a different scope and we change the value, but we're not overwriting the original. So by using classes and objects in Python, you can actually control the scope of your program to actually have variables that only exist within the execution block of the, the class that you're defining. So that way you don't have some rogue class accidentally overriding global variables that may be referenced throughout your program and other areas. Otherwise, you could have one class that accidentally does that and all of a sudden it just wreaks havoc on the rest of the program that might have to rely on scope variables. So that's why you wouldn't want that to occur. Now typically when you're building a class object, um, Python has a, a weird method which is considered its construction constructor method which is the init method and what these are is they're actually two underscores and it's two underscores init and then two underscores and it stands for initialization and just like the method below you have to actually pass in the self keyword and what this does is this gets executed it will be fired every time an object is created so when this is created here it's going to automatically call this without having to actually specifically call it. So that's why um, you'll see the init method a lot in Python. And here is where we typically would say something like self.scope variable equals uh, change the value. And then we would, instead of doing this, we could just reference self.scope variable And you can see it's the same same exact output. Now what's good about this init variable too is you can actually add arguments to it. So we could say arg1 and instead of actually doing uh, that we're going to just go ahead and define this local scope variable the arg1 value that gets passed in. So when we instantiate the class we're actually going to pass in the first argument will be uh, whatever we want. So this is what, whatever we want. And you can see that the value has been passed in on the class instantiation and then it was actually executed automatically without saying, hey, call init. So if we wanted to we can see that the init is going to be called before the print statement gets called. And it's using this value that was passed in right here. So that's how you could create a class that actually takes in a lot of different values. And then you also have local variables that only exist within the scope of the, the, call, the, the class context. You know, so basically this class container scope uh, you know so uh, scope variable does not exist so if we actually went ahead and we said like uh, self dot test because normally you probably wouldn't want to have the same global variable name you probably want to be somewhat uh, cautious with how many global variables you're using in a program but uh, so we'll say just self dot test is the name of the the program if I wanted to actually reference that um, let me go ahead and just run this real quick Oh, I'm sorry, we're not passing in. Now here's an actual test of uh, me not really paying attention, but what I did here is I actually overwrote my method name with this, uh, this string value that's being passed into the class object. So you get this string object not callable because it's no longer a method on a class. I overwrote it to a string, so you gotta be careful with that kind of shite. Um, so you would wanna say like print string is the name of the method so instead of that I'll say print string so you can see we get these same outputs so you always want to be careful if I'm not paying attention I just quickly overwrite a method I can I can do that in fact I can even name variables like protected words and in, in Python like print and stuff like that I can rename print by accident if you're not careful um, so it's it's kinda it gives you a lot of flexibility to hang yourself now one final example of this uh, class video is in uh, the scope scope discussion is that I want to show you what happens if we create a local variable without using the self. It doesn't even, you can create variables locally in the class 
without having to use self if you if you want so if I wanted like within this method um, to just have like uh, any sort of value so we'll just say my variable equals test mo test this mother f and then I go ahead and under here I'll just go ahead and say uh, print uh, my variable right so I'm actually referencing inside this uh, constructor function or method I'm sorry I called it the wrong thing constructor method and you can see it prints out it's fine it's uh, it's local now what happens if I actually try to uh, rep or access that that local variable within that class object from the global scope so meaning outside of the class object if I try to do that we'll go ahead and do that and see what happens so I'm trying to call that and it's defined inside of this class object. If I run this here, we're going to get a runtime error that it says my variable is not defined because it's not in the global scope. It's only in this local class scope. So that's why scope is, Im is important. Um, and it just takes a little while to get the hang of. And just so you know, the scope of this particular variable is defined only within this method of this class. So technically the scope isn't even the class, it's the method within this class. So it's actually the constructor method within this class. So if I try to access that from this second method in the class, and I try to say print my variable, and we run this, we're going to get the same problem that my variable is not defined. So that's why it's important that if you are going to have variables that need to be accessed throughout the class under several different methods, you're going to want to define those using this self dot you know method that I showed you. If it's going to be values passed into the object, use it this way. If you don't have to worry about passing in stuff, you can just list unlimited number of you know class like um, it wouldn't be called basically class level method uh, uh, variables you could list as many as you want here using the self dot notation and then if you know that you just want to have a variable that's only going to be restricted to the method that's being called then you could just you know do it this way so basically we looked at several different ways of creating variables and um, accessing them from a class, outside of a class, what the difference is. And it takes a, a long time to get the hang of. Python's a little bit, um, uh, a little bit strange with its object orientation, um, but I'm sure you'll get the hang of it eventually. And uh, you definitely got to play around with this stuff. So this is uh, more advanced level Python stuff, but something you definitely need to know and get the hang of. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and have a good day. Bye.